Good morning, everyone. So, today is we will be talking about scientific evidence. In this presentation, we will talk about what is scientific evidence, the form of scientific evidence, and the types of scientific evidence. So, when we say evidence, this is a proof of allegation, meaning your allegation should be supported by an evidence that is sanctioned or following a law ascertaining or so it can be it can support the judicial proceedings so that the truth will be revealed using your evidence so remember your evidence should follow the section rule 128 of the revised rule on evidence of the court so aside from that <clears throat> Scientific evidence is classified as the means sanctioned by law. When we say sanctioned by law, ano yung kailangang hanapin? Ano yung hanapin ng batas in order for a case to be resolved? So, it should also ascertain in a judicial proceeding. Meaning to say, pwede siyang sumuport dun sa judicial proceedings na needed. And then, Remember that uh, it should re resolve whatever the, whatever is hidden in the crime, so that the truth will be will will surface. So to continue, also, meron tayong collateral matter, meaning these evidences shall not be allowed except. Pag sinabi natin, except, hindi siya tatanggapin yung ebidensya nung, nung kaso na yon unless nagpa-follow siya to a certain reso reasonable degree. Meaning, yung degree niya is acceptable by the conditions prescribed by the court. So remember, you have to establish the probability and improbability of the fact. So probable ba yung evidence mo to claim or to solve a case? If yes, then the evidence should be accepted. Improbable naman, masyadong malayo na siya dun sa case na sinosolve mo. So, hindi siya a-accept natin as evidentia. So, it may be either direct, indirect, and circumstantial. See. So, when we say direct evidence, so this is perceived by our senses. Remember, our senses are Eyes or sense organs are eyes for seeing, nose for smelling, ears is for listening, skin is for touching, ano pa? So, yun yun. So, our sense organs are the ones that are involved in the direct evidence. So, meaning to say, yung witness that will testify, so, ang evidence niya, under this direct evidence is direct niyang na-witness. Meaning, narinig niya, natikman niya, nakapita niya, or nahawakan niya, nalasahan niya, nakita niya. So, those experiences are considered as direct evidence. So, remember, direct evidence are very hard to generate since most of the crimes are done secretly. So, kung nagamitin natin yung mata natin or yung seeing or, or, or sense of sight at night, so medyo mahirap establish yung probability. How about naman, um, nakita lang yung food pero hindi siya nalasahan. So, you have to establish the probability also. So, even if there is or there are witnesses, <clears throat> but they are not willing to testify, you have to support pa din the case. So, meaning to say, um, you have to get other types of evidences. Kahit, uh, kahit na may direct evidence or may witness na merong direct evidence. Kasi, kung wala namang gustong mag-testify, so, ang mangyayari sa iyo is, you have to exhaust other available modes. Okay, how about circumstantial evidence? This is the letter B or the second type. This is established by a conclusion or inferences. 
pag sinabi natin conclusion, nag-conclude yung investigator out of inferences na nakita nyo or na-observe. Example, is merong isang policeman na nagpapatrol. So, narinig nung police na yon yung isang sigaw sa isang bahay. So, when he entered the house, he saw a man coming out of a house carrying a bloody knife. What would be the conclusion? The conclusion is that a man, the, that man might committed a crime using a bloody knife. So, the policeman arrested the man and upon entering the house, he saw a female cadaver. So, merong patay na babae lying on the floor with a stab wound on the breast. Breast, rather. So, anong inferences niya? So, si policeman, hindi niya nakita yung evidence. Ah, hindi niya nakita directly yung crime na kinukumit ng lalaki. Pero nakita niya na yung lalaki ay lumabas ng bahay na may, dadal may daladala ng kutsilyo. So, for the circumstantial evidence, Arigito is, yung policeman would testify or can testify in a court proceeding saying that he saw the man with a bloody knife. <clears throat> and ang conclusion ng prosecutor nun is yung knife or yung kutsilyo na may dugo is the one that, has, that is used by criminal in killing the woman. So that is the circumstantial evidence. So remember, it is uh, under the present law, circumstantial evidence is sufficient. Meaning, okay na siya. Pero malalaman mo siya kung sufficient kapag there are more than one circumstances. So, ano yung more than one circumstances? So, limbawa, yung lalaki lumabas, may daladalang kutsilyo. May wala namang patay dun sa loob. So, wala naman siyang circumstances. May nasugatan sa loob. So, probably, yung nasugatan na babae sa loob is the, is the one na witness. Aside from being the victim as well. So for the letter B naman, the facts from inferences are derived from proven. So alimbawa, yung kutsilyo may dugo. So ano ang kakayahan ng kutsilyo? And then bakit merong dugo yung kutsilyo? So proven na yung inferences natin. Ang kutsilyo ay isang matalas na object that can be used to wound or to stab a wound to someone. And then the other one is the combination of circumstances. Halimbawa, mayroon ka pang ibang circumstances aside from nakita mo yung lalaking lumapas, na-record niya yan ng CCTV. So, mayroon siyang beyond reasonable doubt na kon Okay, example is common reputation natin. Ah, oh, sorry. Here's the evidence is a statement of witness. Tapos, witness on the authority or authority of another. So, alimbawa, narinig niya. So, kadalasan kasi ang chismis, hindi siya admissible sa korte. Pag sinabi natin hindi admissible, hindi siya tinatanggap sa korte. Kasi, mahirap pat patunayan ang chismis. Pero, may 11 tayo na ways kung saan or 11 kinds of hearsay evidence na tinatanggap sa court. The first one is dying declaration. When you say dying declaration, this is a declaration committed by someone who is in the bridge of death. Kagaya ng mamamatay na siya. So, may inamin siyang isang crime. So, it can be used as a hearsay evidence. Or may may inkwentro nga yan. Hinanap kung sa ah, na uh, nabaril yung yung hinahabol ng police tinanong ng police kung sino ang amo niya or behind this syndicate niya and then sinabi nung someone na mamatay kung sino yung behind this niya syndicate so that is a dying declaration admissible to the court pag sinabi nating rest just this is the pag sinabi nating rest just oh this is a Spontaneous admission of something. So, example ng spontaneous admission of something is merong nangyaring isang bagay kagaya ng 
yung babae, hinahapol ngayon ng hold upper. Ah, oh, sorry. Hindi ng hold upper. So, nakasalubong niya yung boyfriend niya, o yung ex-boyfriend niya, tapos sinaksak siya. So, the girl shouted, and then eventually, may sumaklolo. So, spontaneous niyang diniklear na yung boyfriend niya, yung ex-boyfriend niya, yung sumaksak sa kanya. So, that is admissible to the court. Kung sino may sinabihan niya, that is already a witness. Kahit hindi niya nakita yung crime. So, yun yun. Another one is declaration against interest. So, ang, ano ang halimbawa nito? Ang halimbawa nito is yung mga tumitistigo sa Senate hearing. Act or declaration about pedigree. So, umamin siya na anak niya yung ganito. So, act or declaration. Another one is family reputation. Pag sinabi natin, or tradition regarding a pedigree, kunyari, within a family pala is accepted yung, ta- yung incest. Meron mga ganyang tribes before. So, that is already considered as a hearsay evidence. Common reputation, sing babae niya is ganito. So, or yung lalaki is, is nga ganyan yung trabaho niya. So, nagbibenta ngayon ng aliw yung babae or lalaki. So, that is type of hearsay evidence. Common reputation na. And then, part of rest just stay. So, part of rest just stay is buhay man yung babae, nakasurvive siya. Yung automatic admission niya at the time na sinaksak ko niya siya, nung example natin kanina na ex-boyfriend, yung admission niya is part of rest just stay. So, that is also example of this type of evidence. Entries in the course of business. So, yung mga, mga, ano natin, mga entries. Kagaya ng mga, mga evidences natin, documents. So, yun yun. Entries in official records. So, tinanong si guard, nang hold up na yung isang lalaki ng Bangko, tinanong si guard, anong oras pumasok, ganyan, ganyan. That is entries in official record. If verify nila yung official record, kaya ng logbook. Learn treaties and testimony or disposition at former proceeding. Pag sinabi natin testimony or disposition, ito yung mga tao na nagsworn sa korte. And then upon warning, hindi na yun kayang bali eh. Kasi kakasuhan siya eh. So, admission yun kasi sa court. Another is the form of evidence. Pag sinabi natin form of evidence, these are the type of evidences or forms of evidences. So the first one is real or autoptic evidence, meaning the evidence which is addressed to the senses of the court. So at po ay usually yung mga evidence na nakikita, but extend also to those that are perceived by sense of hearing, taste, smell, or touch. So, yun yung real. Ginamitan natin siya ng sense organ. Yung evidence na yun. Pag sinabi naman natin testimonial evidence, someone may be called as expert to answer the question being asked by both parties. So, attorney ng kabila, attorney ng kabila, tatanungin yung testimony or yung witness in a witness stand. Yun yun. That is why testimonial evidence yun. Next is documentary evidence. These are any written evidence presented in the court. Kagaya po ng certificate, expert opinion, formal written report, disposition. So, pwede yun. And remember, ang trabaho natin dito is a fact finder. Meaning to say, during the investigation, kailangan mong hanapin yung totoo. Governing the law of Forensic Chemistry and Forensic Science. So, you have to get the evidence as the investigator in a way na kailangan siyang tanggapin at katanggap-tanggap ng korte. Kasi hindi lahat ng ebidensya ay tinatanggap ng korte. Pag mahina kang mag-produce, or hindi mag-produce, mahina kang makahanap ng evidence, Pwede yung suspect na guilty pala ay ma-proved as not guilty kasi magaling yung kanilang lawyer. So your your job here is to get the facts admissible in the court 
and even years, 25 years, 30 years, impregnable siya. Meaning to say, hindi siya kayang baliin yung ebidensya mong sinabmit. And then, you as the fact finder or the investigator should be in constant contact with various investigative and enforcement agencies so that you can establish as well your, your credibility.